I'm Charlotte and I'm an artist here at Get Arty. We'll just follow the line that we've drawn. The type of art that I really love to make is anything that you can wear and I love drawing cartoons. I'm going to follow that triangle down towards his mouth and he's going to have a big smile. I love drawing funny cartoons or like putting two weird things together like a duck and an elephant. Like a duck of it. Do you know what's better than an elephant and better than a duck? A duck and an elephant at the same time! I also do cartoon voices! And I write for cartoons uh, and I illustrate children's books as well. Now it's time to outline in pen. So I went to film school and then I ended up working in animation and I kind of got into voice acting by doing that because I was around in studios where they were making Blinky Bill and they just need um, what they call scratch voices. So you need a temporary voice and I would go in and do them and the people in the studio were like, hey, you're pretty good. Do you want to do this for a job? And I said, yes, please. I would like to do it for a job. Uh... Marsha the mouse is like, Oi, Blinky, you come here, say that to my face. Drop bears, real or not? With my voice over work, when I get a new character, I walk around the house doing the voice and if I really annoy the people that I live with and I make them laugh, then I know it's a good voice. Uh, no, 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 please, too beautiful. Mm, no, I can't, I can't. No. Hi, I'm Charlotte and it's time to get arty. Your very own pet dragon. Hey, I'm Charlotte, and it's time to get Artie. Oh, he's had quite an emotional day. Um, can be hard being a mouse and finding your cheese in the world. Having a great imagination is a wonderful skill. It allows you to see the world in all sorts of new fantastical ways. Let me show you how to turn something ordinary into something fabulous. To make your very own set of fishy earrings, you're going to need a set of pliers, some scissors, gold jump rings, some earring hooks, and you can pick these up from a craft store. Nail polish, I've chosen two colors, a pearly sparkly gold color and a cobalt blue. Last but not least, you're gonna need a clean sushi soy fish container thing. This. <laughs> The first step is to cut the tip of the soy sauce bottle off. I don't know where it's gone. You're going to need an adult for this next part because we're using some sharp scissors. We're going to use them just to make a hole beneath the fish's mouth on both sides. I've decided to use some nail scissors. Be careful when you do this. And same on the other side. Using your blue nail polish, we're going to cover one side of the fish entirely in blue. Doesn't matter which side. We'll do about three layers on both sides until it's a nice solid blue colour. Give it a number of coats and let it dry for a few minutes in between each one. <sighs> I'm using nail polish, but you can also use enamel paint. We've got three good coats on it. We're going to add some gold details with this one. You're just going to add with short brush strokes some gold to the tail, fins, the gills, and to the eye. While we're waiting for that to dry, we're going to make the part that goes in your ear and also connects to the fish. Grab two earring hooks, one, two, and a jump ring. and some pliers. So open up the jump ring with our pliers. Just slip it open. 
and grab your first hook, slide it onto the jump ring. And do the same with the other one, but have it pointing in the opposite direction. Excellent. And then just close the jump ring up. Perfect. And you're left with something a bit like this. In fact, exactly like this. Thread this through the hole that we made earlier. You want it pointing out the, the front side of the fish. Uh, just gotta poke it through. It's kind of like you're hooking a fish. And voila! Now all we need to do is make another one for the other ear. <laughs> it can be sculptures, uh, models. Once I got a lemon and stuck a face into it and I called it Lemon Man and it was art. <laughs> you can do anything with art. It can be patterns and things. Yeah. And you could probably do a swell and it could be a piece of art. You could have graffiti, some people drawing murals on the ground. Mazes, labyrinths. You, you can, can make, make like pop, um, pop art, you can, or printing on the computer. Um, laser cutting. Even food art, where you make food into animals or food into yeah. bicycles. Crazy sets for plays, anything. Yeah. Like anything that's creative is art. It could be as simple as just putting a couple of splotches on a piece of paper. Art. Art is making, um, it's creating, it's sculpturing. It's so creative that anything can be art, so that's what I like the most about it. It's not limited, they nobody can say, oh that's bad art. It could be sort of real, but then it could also be abstract. Art's something you can visualise, something you can see, and something someone else can interpret. Yeah, I can't add much to that. It can be someone or something. I just like how, particularly with abstract art, like you're just, um, you're just drawing things, and then when you're finished, it just all comes together. And then you're like, wow, I did that? Yeah, you know? that's right. I like portraits of people and I also like, um, like, the sea. I sort of like um, portraits and, um, like, tapestry style art, you know? I like drawings of the beach, um, yeah. like Bondi Beach. I, I've seen some draw really nice drawings of Bondi Beach. I like lots of Picasso's paintings, like the Blue Period and um, lots of the other ones too. I liked all of them. It could be a position, it could be your favourite food. That's art to you, whether it is to you or to someone else. History can be remembered through art. Like, there are paintings of um, gods and stuff, and that's, that teaches you a little bit about history, but it's still art. I like that as well. So I was little, I've made my own clothing and came from a big family, so it was always a case of taking secondhand clothes and making them into something for myself. I do anything from sculpture to fashion to wearable art. Most people know it as things like fitness tracking devices, things like that, but also it can be putting tech into costumes, into clothing. So I'm thinking about what the future of what we wear might be and how it can be perhaps interactive or intelligent. I made a piece of work which tracks my sleep. In an art gallery, I set up a bed, a dye box and a weaving loom and then I connect myself to the dyeing machine and I sleep. And while I'm sleeping, some wool is being dyed blue whenever I'm deeply asleep, but if I wake up, it comes out of the dye bar. And the result is a big stripy blanket, which is a kind of a, like a, the memory of my sleep. My name is Trish and I make art people can wear.
I think wearing a costume is all about creating an illusion and transforming from this into a fantasy. Cosplay is costume and roleplay. It's people in costumes having fun. This is a complete hobby for me. I'm actually a nursing student. I kind of do it once a year, basically for Supernova. It's nice and relaxing and gets me out of my studies. These shoes are just flat canvas shoes glued straight onto a piece of EVA foam on the bottom. In total, this costume has taken me about one to two months to make. My key point for costumes is detail, so everything has to be detailed properly for me and that's what makes it all worthwhile. Hi, I'm an alien and it took me about five hours to do this makeup. I had to apply the tentacles onto my head and that would glue, then a lot of liquid latex, so prosthetic, and that took about three hours to do. The best part about dressing up is you get to be whoever you want. I just love just being someone else for the day. I think a great costume is one where you can look at it and wonder if it's real. So that, that's a great costume. I think it's an art form of personal expression. It's great to sort of be able to put it on and go to an event and have have people come up to me and say, oh, awesome costume, man. Like, that looks awesome. It's, it's a nice feeling to have, you know, all the hard work that I put into it, someone having some recognition because I've been working on this costume for about two years now. Every single armor plate that I'm wearing, I have made myself from PVC drain pipe that I bought at hardware stores. I'll never be finished with it. I'll constantly be making improvements. This costume took six months to make and it's made out of foam, cables, fabric, plastic, paper, you name it, anything out of the garage. My favourite part would have to be the head because it gives the robotic effect. It's just a hobby of mine that I've been doing for the past three years. It's just pure fun for me, honestly. I'm no designer, I'm nothing like that. The best reaction that I've had here today, a little kid was screaming, thought I was a real robot, and I had to explain that I'm just a normal person. <laughs> That's it. Have you ever wanted to put your own stamp on fashion? Well, I'm gonna show you just that by making your very own t-shirt stamp. What you'll need is scissors, paint palette, permanent marker, paint brushes, craft foam, some scrap wood, some fabric paint, wood glue, some old t-shirts and a hairdryer. Now the first step is to draw your design into the craft foam. You can do this by freehand drawing or by using a stencil. I drew up this anchor before. Using your permanent marker, trace around your stencil and then cut it out. Just make sure you hold your stencil in place so you get the right shape. That's all finished, time to cut it out. Using your wood glue, glue it right into the centre of your scrap wood block. You can repeat this process with as many designs as you like, just let it dry for about two to three hours. This paint is actually quite thick, I had to spoon it out. Now that my wooden block is dry, get your paintbrush and dip it in the paint and do a really thin layer only on the foam. Now I'm ready to stamp. I'm just gonna do one anchor on the pocket of the T-shirt. Make sure you line it up and press down firmly. And to set the fabric paint, you go over it with a hairdryer for a couple of minutes and you're done.
I'm Christine Thompson and I'm a milliner. A milliner creates and designs hats. Today I'm going to show you how to change a headband, do something a bit more fancy. I'm going to use um, pipe cleaners or chenille sticks and a few feathers. Feathers can be any colour that you like. First of all, you just sort of pick out a few like this. I just used pink and purple today and, and a bit of white. You put it like this. I like yellow, so I'm going to put a yellow around it. Wrap it. And because it has wire in it, it's going to stay there so you don't have to glue it or stitch it. And it's very easy to do. And then I want another few feathers in there, so I'll pick out a few and then you put it about there. You want to be able to see that one as well. And you might do a purple. Tightly, you just have to do it quite firmly so it stays there. And I like them just above your ear. That's sort of um, a cute thing to do. So I sort of put it halfway down rather than right at the top. Put another colour on there too. So an orange. And you wrap. Keep wrapping until it's all gone. And if you want to put another colour on the other side, you can do that too. Maybe a green on there too, if you like. Bright and cheerful and a bit, bit different, a bit special. All finished. Voila! And you're a millionaire. Today I'm going to show you how to make wearable 3D art using a cap, some coloured paints, fabric glue, a sponge, an old keyboard, a ruler and a small paintbrush. So what we're making is pretty much a cap with a bit of paint and some phrases made from a keyboard. Let's get arty. So first thing, grab your sponge, grab one of your paints and just squeeze a line just across like that. I've chosen white. I'm using two colours, one light and one dark, and that way when they blend in together, it gives a nice contrast between the two. Grab your cap, grab your sponge, and we're going to swipe it across the front of the cap. You can always come back to it and brush across. I mean, there's no real rules to this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the paint's wearing a little bit thin, so I'm just gonna grab a bit more paint. To the hat. And you can see it goes from a dark blue to a lighter shade on the right-hand side. And that's it, just let it sit and allow it to dry. And now for the next step. I'm gonna grab our keyboard. So we're gonna put a catchphrase on our caps. Try to think of something that's short, and remember, you've only got one keyboard, so you can only use the letters once. Now, if your heart's set on making a word with the same letter twice, you can get a little bit creative, and you can even use the numbers. Like, for instance, with the three, if you flip it around, it looks like an E. So the phrase I've come up with today is beach you to it. It's a play on words, so beat, I'm using the word beach instead. I'm going for a bit of a beach theme. And the first thing I'm going to start with is the B. Just grab your ruler. You can always use a butter knife. Make sure your old keyboard isn't plugged into anything. And guys, if you're not sure about anything, just get an adult to help you out. Just to help you pop out your letters. I'm going to be a little bit clever and just use the one letter U as opposed to Y-O-U. See? Beach, you, to it. Okay, so I'm gonna put the ruler and the keyboard aside. Next we we'll grab our fabric glue. Just squeeze a little bit out. So grab the middle letter of your word, A, and just use the line of the hat to find the center. And that's gonna go on first. And the reason being, it's gonna be a guide for the other letters as we work along. So just stab some fabric glue. A little bit onto the back. Find the center of the cap with the mark there. 
just press down. When sticking on the letters, just put your other hand inside the cap and press the letter from behind and use your other hand to press from the front. Don't worry if your letters start to slide down. It probably means you need a little bit more glue. And once it's dry, your art is ready to wear.